The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 1 Fallen There was grass beneath Starlight Glimmer's hooves. Her head was spinning. She didn't feel up to opening her eyes, or even getting up. Beneath her, blades wet with morning dew brushed against the pinkish fur of her belly, slightly chilly and soothing against her newly acquired host of aches. She could breathe, however, and was reasonably sure she hadn't passed out. Her ears flicked, a mountain breeze tracing its way through them. She heard a distant rush, possibly water or trees or any number of things. Thankfully, she also felt the weight of two saddlebags pressing against her sides. Trying to survive without her provisions wasn't something she cared to think about. At last, she opened her eyes. She was lying on the crest of a large hill, freshly strewn with loose gray stones dislodged in her tumble. Groaning, she looked upwards. A sheer, loose cliff face loomed high above, and several meters up she could see a dark patch marking the mouth of the cave from which she had recently fallen. Starlight eventually ignored it, looking only forwards. The hill itself was surprisingly forgiving, just shallow enough in gradient that thick, rich grass clung to it all the way down. Beyond, in every way she turned, Mountains far taller than the one from which she had fallen blotted out the horizon, close enough that they forced her to tilt her neck to see the peaks, yet still impossibly far away. In the valleys littering their bases, forests sprawled in a dark green blanket, reaching as far as halfway up some of the more imposing slopes. Starlight didn't need the shade of her canopies to tell her the area in which she'd emerged was rich in rains. The musky scent of freshly ionized air tickled her nose even though there was hardly a cloud in the sky. She held still, sniffing harder. The mountain range behind her was said to be impassable. No roads braved its surface, no passes had been documented, no ponies kept more than granny tails of the lands that lay beyond. For several weeks, judging by the number of times she'd slept at least, Starlight had walked and lived the caves that traced through the heights of those mountains in search of a way to prove the ponies wrong. And finally, she'd done it. She was outside. Slowly, she felt a heat against her back. The sun was high enough in the sky to pierce the mountain behind her, it seemed. Apparently, that meant she was facing west. Starlight didn't care. She simply lay there, allowing the warmth to soothe the cavern's lightless chill that had infested her very core. She let the dew soak into her coat, feeling a spike of pleasure at the almost palpable sensation of stony dust working its way free. She inhaled deeply, allowing the clean mountain air to cleanse and refresh her lungs, and promptly fell asleep, there in the grass. Starlight came to with a start. The sun was reaching the horizon, admittedly still quite high up. She ran her mind over her extremities, something she chided herself for not doing earlier, and was relieved to find nothing painful or broken. So she got to her hooves and stretched. Then she shrugged off and opened her saddlebags, taking stock of their contents. Having lain in the grass alongside her, the bags were damp, as was she. Starlight grumbled and brushed her chest fur with a hoof before turning back to the bags. She had some food left, probably enough for another week if she conserved at her present pace. Hungrily, she stole a glance at the trees in the shadowed valley below. Anything they might grow was certainly better than the stale bread and holy cheese. Her water canteens were a different story. All but one were empty, and that was after refilling them at a pool deep within the caves some time earlier. It wasn't as good as mountain water was proverbially said to be. But perhaps that would change now that she had made it to the surface. Already she could count over two dozen streaks of glacial meltwater racing down steep inclines to the forested valley beneath her. Her eyes drifted upward, 
catching the glare of the setting sun refracting a freshly fractured snowbank that fed the glacial runoff. Peaks linked with peaks in a wall of amber-tinged majesty that nearly made Starlight's eyes water. The only items remaining were a thin, lightweight blanket, a folded paper map of Equestria, not that she'd needed that, and a small black box sealed closed inside a waterproof case. That appeared to be undamaged. Starlight looked forward again with renewed interest, mentally planning her route in her head. The sun was setting, she knew that to be west, and since the mountain range she had just crossed ran from east to west, she squinted at the rivers sparkling in the sunlight. Those would ultimately be making their way north. Following them would take her out of the mountains and at least give her a plentiful supply of water and vegetation. Vegetation. Her stomach growled and she glared back at her bags. Then she nosed the grass on the ground, rolled her eyes, and took a bite. It wasn't like anyone was watching. For something that was considered anywhere from a sign of abject poverty to a public nuisance in Equestria, and even worse in predominantly desert areas, eating grass felt and tasted surprisingly good. It might have been the mountain air or the fact that this particular patch of grass likely hadn't been trodden in thousands of years, or even the monotony of her diet the last few weeks, but the crunch of greenness against her teeth and slender, leafy bitterness on her tongue and throat made Starlight shiver in delight. She tossed her head back, munching and swallowing. It was like eating spaghetti and a salad at the same time. She leaned back down, taking a second bite and a third, and eventually lay back down entirely, contentedly munching away. As she filled her cheeks with greens, she reflected with additional satisfaction upon how naturally she was doing something that was entirely unnatural in Equestria. Eventually, Starlight rolled onto her back, delightfully remembering what it felt like to be full, when she was plunged abruptly into shadow. She glared up at the western mountains. The sun had sank behind them entirely. Shivering involuntarily, she glanced forlornly up at the still-lit peaks to her right and back. She just slept a whole day, and as tired as she was, she didn't presently feel like fixing an inverted sleep schedule. So she hitched up her saddlebags and climbed to her weary limbs and began trotting north. End of chapter one.